So today, grab your Bible. We're in a series called Say What? And I helped you out last week. Say What is simply an expression of surprise at what somebody just said. So in order to say what and, and understand it, you have to take that what and go, what? You're like a little middle school girl, you know what I'm saying? So I want you to get your middle school mentality on, okay? Some of you are like, I don't even know what that is. Just raise your voice and, and, and hang it out there. When I say say, we're going to say say what together. You ready? It's going to sound like this. Say what? You ready? Here we go. Say You're getting it. Come on, come on. I want this to sink down in your heart. You're like, what are you doing, Pastor? Because today, God's going to do, you're, there's going to be some say what moments that you're going to hold on to in these next few weeks. So, so let's say it again. You ready? Say you're getting it, you're getting it, you're getting there. Today, say what? I mean, think of it this way. How many appreciate and enjoy being delayed? How many enjoy just waiting? Just knowing that there's a delay in life. Like you get to a place and you feel like you're in a holding pattern. You get to a place and you feel like, man, at this moment, I, I'm just like, here, what's next? Three years ago, this week, I got on a plane with my lovely wife, and we flew out of Orlando, but we didn't really fly out of Orlando. We were supposed to fly out of Orlando because there was a thunderstorm in Orlando, and they shut the airport down for four hours. So we sat on the floor in the Orlando International Airport waiting for them to fly us from Orlando to Melbourne, Australia, or Orlando to Los Angeles, and then from Los Angeles, catch a red eye or, or midnight flight and fly all night long into the next day, into, well, jump a day and land in Melbourne, Australia. Amazing flight, but it didn't happen the way I wanted it to. Because on the 27th of, of, of March, I would have landed in Australia on my birthday. And it was my 49th birthday. And I'm like, you know, I wanna spend my 49th birthday. I wasn't the pastor of this church. I was, I was the district youth director for the Assemblies of God. And the week before this happened, uh, Pastor Ken was calling me and saying, hey, hey, uh, and we had met with different people in the church. Hey, this could be your next. And I was like, God, what are you saying to us? And when we flew from Orlando to Los Angeles, we got into Los Angeles at midnight Los Angeles time. So my body was like three or four o'clock in the morning. I'm like, what are we going to do? We don't fly out to the next day, late in the next day. We went to the sketchiest hotel that they put us up in. And in that moment, I said, I am not staying here. I took an Uber to another hotel and stayed there and slept. And then I took another Uber to a rental car company. And on the 27th, it was like Easter. We spent Easter in, in, in Los Angeles, of all things. Everything's closed. I'm like, this is awesome. I get to see everything in LA. We got on a plane flew to Melbourne, and when I flew to Melbourne, I missed my birthday. It was the 27th, and we landed on the 29th. That means I missed a year. Isn't that awesome? It's the way I look at it. Totally, if you miss your birthday completely, somewhere over the Pacific, the time zone shifted and shot me into another day, and I was like, well, there it is. Come on now. That's a great way to spend. I had plans of going to Melbourne and looking at at kangaroos, <laughs> seeing the, that's not what Melbourne is, but, but I just wanted to, 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 to spend just one day there before we went to this conference. But when we landed there, we got on a van, it was a shuttle that the church had, and I met two individuals that if I wasn't delayed, I would have never met. And I met these two individuals and we talked all the way from the airport to the hotel. And we got to the hotel the next morning, I sat down with one of these pastors from Los Angeles and that we'd flown out with, and I sat down and, and in this moment of delay, God showed up and I knew what was next. And I knew this was next. And I knew that he had spoke to me in that moment. Some of us in this room look at delay and we think it's denial. We look at delays in our life and we think this isn't God's plan. I don't deserve this. Why am I walking through this? But on the other side, God's got a greater plan. On the other side, sometimes it's in the middle that we feel frustration. But in the middle is the place where we express our faith and we keep moving forward. We keep saying, God, 
I'm not gonna live in the land of frustration. I'm not gonna live in the land of delay. I'm gonna understand that what I am in the middle of, if I'm in the middle of a delay, God, this is a great place to express my faith. This is a great place to live out faith in a greater way. I would, think of it this way. If I didn't meet that gentleman and didn't sit down with him, I wouldn't have had the word that was in my heart confirmed again and again and again. And some of the very specific questions that I was asking God confirmed if I would have made the flight in Orlando. I was frustrated because I didn't get there early. But in the middle of my frustration, I realized God has a greater purpose. You may be in a frustrating situation right now. You may be in a desperate situation right now. You may be in a situation right now that you have no answers at all for what you're walking through. I'm here to remind you today that if he said it, if he said he has a plan, if he said he's the son of the most high God, if he said his name is Jesus and he hung on a cross for me, then guess what? If he said it, he is who he says he is and he can do what he says he can do and he can bring life to my situation and he can do greater in my situation, then I'm gonna see him in a greater way. It's a choice we make. So the question, that I'm gonna ask you today, it's, it's a simple question. And I think a lot of us ask this question at times. It's, it's, what do you do when God does not deliver what you want him to when you want him to? What do you do when there's this delay? What do you do when, when God doesn't show up when you want him to? Look with me in, in John chapter 11, verse one. We're gonna look at uh, the story of Lazarus. And I honestly believe that there's some say what moments in the story. And it'll actually help us frame exactly what, what we should do in the middle of wondering why he's not showing up. In the middle of wondering, man, I'm frustrated with making a decision. I'm frustrated with, with where I am. But in the middle of all that, we can actually do what? We can actually find out what his plan is. And if we can look through the lens that he has for us in terms of our plan, and we can keep walking. Look with me in John chapter 11. It says this. Now, when you, read, when you read the Bible, you have to read it through the lens a lot of times of the writer that writes it. And John's writing this gospel. And when John writes this gospel, there's things that, that he puts in here that he wants you to know. There's very clear things that he puts in here that he wants you to understand about the story so that you can understand the whole story. So in John chapter 11, verse 1, it says this. Now, a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany the village of Mary and, his, and her sister Martha. Verse two, this is what John wants you to know. This Mary whose brother Lazarus now lay sick was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sister sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for the glory of so that God's son may be glorified through it. What a great say what moment. Because they sent word because they were desperate and Jesus like, nope, it's not gonna end in death. It's gonna end in God's glory. Verse five, it says, now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. And then he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. Jump down to verse 11. After he had said this, he went to tell them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am gonna go there to wake him up. Everyone say, wake up. This is a wake up call for the disciples. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he'll get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but the disciples thought he meant he was naturally asleep. Verse 14, so he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. He's talking to his disciples. He's like, hey, we're gonna go wake him up. They're like, oh, if he's asleep, he can wake up on his own. You know what they're saying? They're like, I don't wanna go to Judea. But he was like, hey, Lazarus is dead. It's great say what moment. Verse 15, and for your sake, I am glad I was not there so that you may believe. Can you say believe? He's saying, I'm glad I wasn't there, but now you're gonna believe. But let us go to him. Verse 17, on his arrival, Jesus found Lazarus had been dead in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Mary or to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. 
verse 20, when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Verse 20, Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Verse 23, Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know. I know he will rise again in the resurrection of the last day. <coughs> and then Jesus said to her, I am. Can you say I am? This is the most powerful moment in scripture because everything hinges on who we believe Jesus is. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Say what? Verse 27, yes, Lord, she replied. I believe you are the Messiah, the Son of God who is coming into the world. Let's pray today. Jesus, Lord, speak to our hearts, speak to our lives. Give us ears to hear what your word is saying. God, I pray that my opinion would fade away. But Jesus, Lord, speak into every situation that we're walking through. And Jesus, let us see you. You are the resurrection and the life. And we choose to believe today. In Jesus' name. Come on, put your hands together. We're going to celebrate him today. So the main idea of this whole series is if he said it. Because there's some powerful things that Jesus said in Scripture. And if he said it, and we just say, well, I know it, but we fail to believe it, we may not see what he said realized in our hearts and our lives. In the story, some, there's going to be some say what things that come out of the, this whole story that John writes down that took place in Scripture. I think the first one is real, real simple, and I think a lot of us can, can understand or relate with it. The mo there's a moment of desperation. The sisters uh, sent word to Jesus said, Lord, the one that you love is sick. See, John wants us to know that, that, that these sisters sent word to Jesus, and when they sent word to Jesus, their expectation was simple. We've seen you heal people. We know that you're able. All you need to do is come. Now, the sisters didn't go themselves and say, Jesus, you need to come, because he was probably at his last breaths when they were there, and they did not want to leave a family member alone. So they sent word to him, and when they sent word to him, what they're expecting is what a lot of us expect. Immediate, instantaneous gratification. I pray one time, I believe one time, therefore it should happen. But in the midst of it, Jesus doesn't move when they think he should move, and that brings, that brings frustration to the midst of what? Of, of a desperate situation. The simple truth is this, my desperation will only lead to a greater frustration when I expect instant results. When I expect, hey, it's gonna happen, right now. Sometimes we expect it's going to happen right now. Why? Because we live in an on-demand world. We go home. We say, I want to watch a movie. We pull out our remote, hit a button, say, play Dumb and Dumber. It's a movie. Okay, some of you are laughing. <laughs> but you're like, and then boom, the movie will pop up and you'll sit there on the couch I want to watch that. And it's free, on demand, whatever. I don't know if it's free. It'll show you different platforms that you can watch it on. And you can sit there because it's on demand. Now, if you go 15 years ago, you're going to say, man, I want to watch a movie tonight. you got to get up out of your chair and go down to the Blockbuster video where you got to be kind and rewind and go get that tape, then pay for that tape, stand in line with that tape, hope that tape is there. And if it's not there, you got to go, oh, man, I still want to watch something. Then you get frustrated because you're looking at all this that's on the wall and wondering, what am I going to watch? And then you get something you really don't want to watch. And you're like, you go home, you put it in, and you sit down, and you had to go through this whole routine just to get to the moment that now in 2019, we pull out a remote and say, hey, play this. Boom. It's on demand. We are, we are people that everything that we do in life seems to be on demand. Nowadays, you can order food, and they'll bring it to your house. So many different delivery companies will bring, bring whatever you want to your house. We don't, I mean, and we do this thing called mobile ordering now. We go on our phone. We pull up the app. If it's Starbucks, Chick-fil-A, or all these other restaurants, we place our order. We walk in like we own the place. It's sitting there on the counter. We pick it up. Everybody else is like, what just happened? I just waited 20 minutes. You go to Chick-fil-A during lunch. It's like whoosh, double lines everywhere. You mobile order. You walk in. 
Woo! I got the holy bird in the bag. Hello, because fried chicken is the holy bird. You know what I'm saying? And you get rolling out of there. Why? Because you live in an on-demand world. If we treat our faith like it's on-demand, then our faith becomes more about us and less about him. Because we fail to remember that what we walk through is not just for us. What we walk through is for him to display his glory so that people around us can say, wait a minute, you went through that, and you went through that, and you live like that, guess what? I want that, because that's real. That faith is real, because I can see it. If all we do is stand there and go, okay, God, I need you to show up and pay my bills, and boom, he pays it. Okay, God, I need you to just heal the situation. Okay, he heals it. Okay, God, I need you to bring me a woman. Just, you know, we just like any woman, please God, anyone. And then you're like, okay, let's go on. But, but if he, boom, there she is, you know what I'm saying? Please be patient with me, okay? You need to ask for, uh, don't, just describe everything you want in a relationship, hello? You might get the wrong thing. Check your head around, I'm saying. If, if, if that's the way faith works, then, then we miss the whole realization that we have to walk this thing out. That we have to trust him. That we have to believe him. And we have to take steps towards him. This situation was what? It was desperate. This guy was sick. They knew that Jesus was the source. But in the next moment, we realize that, that it's a moment of delay. This is the moment where, where Jesus says the most powerful words. Hey, Jesus said this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory that the son will be glorified. So it says, here's what John wants you to see. Now, Jesus loved Mary her sister, and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, what did he do? Get up, go. Hey, I love him. I'm there. Hey, he didn't just like, no, get on the donkey. Someone give me a donkey so I can get there extra fast. No, it says that he stayed two more days before even moving. He gets the report and tells him, see, desperation can lead you to faith or it can lead you to frustration. We can be in a desperate situation and we can say, well, I'm desperate, so, so, so I'm, and you just get frustrated because it doesn't come when you want it to come. If all we do is focus on, okay, I need this, I need this, I need this, then you've got to do what? You've got to change your perspective. Your situation does not change who your God is because his love for you does not change his response for you. If he loved us any different than he loved anybody else in the world, then that would be conditional love. But his love has never changed. While you were still a sinner, before you even gave your life to Christ, before some of you are like, man, I grew up in church. I can't remember those moments. Guess what? There was a moment where you said yes to Jesus, and prior to that moment, guess what? He still loved you the same. He loves you if you do good, he loves you if you do bad. He loves you if you lift his name up. He loves you if you don't, you know something? Because his love is unconditional. So if his love is unconditional, his response is, is, is heavenly. His response is his. Say this with me. Say, my situation. Come on, say it loud. Say, my situation is the perfect place for God to put his glory on display. Your situation may seem like delay, but the delay is not denial. The delay is not no. The delay is not final. See, whenever anything is delayed, like you ever, you ever order a package online, you're like, you get something for somebody, you order it online, and then they send you a tracking number. Love that tracking number. You click on it, and it shows you, yes, it got on the truck there, and it went there, and it went there, and it went there, and it went there, and it's supposed to come tomorrow, and it's going to all these different cities, and when it gets to this one city, it's, it sends you a, a, a notification or something that says this, your package has been delayed. What happens when your package is delayed? Your frustration grows. You're like, wait a minute, I ordered it. It's supposed to be here. They said it would be here, but it's somewhere between there and here. It's over here. I don't know why it's in Kansas City, but it's sitting there. I want to pick up the phone and call the person in Kansas City and say, put my package back on the truck. Keep it moving in the right direction. Our frustration gets real and it gets, it gets raw because what? Because we want it now. So what do you do? 
You pull out your phone every five minutes and you start getting an update. I want to get an update. I want to know where it is. I want to know, has it moved? Have they, have, they, have they scanned it somewhere else? Has it moved? See, when you feel like your situation is in the midst of delay, maybe you just need to update your life. Maybe you just need to pick up the word and realize that I got an update. I'm in a desperate situation. I don't see the answer yet, but you know something? I can update my life by what this word says. In Psalm 23, it says this. Look at it. It says, the Lord is. Say that with me. Say, the Lord is. Make it personal. He is my shepherd. Man, I'm updating my life. Why? Because I shall not want. I'm not going to want. Why? Because the Lord is my shepherd. How many love Jesus? Come on, do you love him? The enemy wants you to be frustrated in the middle of a delay, but sometimes you just got to pull out the book and say, wait a minute, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Sometimes you got to tell yourself, my situation may be desperate in the midst of my desperation. Guess what? I'm going to update my life. I'm going to give myself an update. The Lord is my shepherd. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. He didn't say, even though I go and I stand in the midst of the valley and I get frustrated and I get discouraged and I say, God, you're not answering my prayer. God, where are you? God, I'm discouraged. No, he said, even though I walk through through the valley. That's a, that's a moment of faith. Sometimes you got to look in a different lens and say, you know something? He's got more, and it's on the other side, and I just got to keep on walking. I just got to keep on moving. I'm not standing still. I can stand in the midst of frustration, but you know, my faith says keep moving. My faith says keep moving. That's a great place to celebrate. My faith is encouraged. Even when I only see delay. For some of us in this room, you can recognize desperation. You can recognize the situation, and you've been praying and praying and praying, and the whole time you're seeing this delay and you don't see the answer. Maybe you need to update your life and say, okay, God, what are you saying to me? God's saying, he's your shepherd, he restores, he guides, he leads, keep walking, keep walking. Why? Because his rod and his staff is going to comfort you. Why? Because you are going to live in the house of the God forever. Why? Because it says your cup overflows. Why does your cup overflow? Because I keep walking, because I keep moving. I'm not gonna live in the land of delay. I'm not gonna live in the land of frustration. I'm gonna take a step of faith. I'm gonna start believing that God has more for me. Keep moving. Come on now, keep moving. Sometimes you have to encourage yourself and look in scripture where, where Paul told the church of Philippi, he said in first, uh, Philippians 4.13, he said, I can. Everyone say, I can. You know, in the midst of delay, sometimes we wonder, can I really? Is he really? Will it happen? Is he answering? Because I don't see it. Faith is not about what you see. Faith is about what you believe. If all we do is say, I know, and we don't step out and believe, because believing is different than knowing. Believing is saying, I'm gonna take a step towards it. Believing is saying, I'm gonna give towards it. Believing is saying, I'm gonna serve towards it. Believing is saying, I'm gonna invite towards it. Why? Because when I believe, then I put my belief into action. My faith becomes action, and when my faith becomes action, that's the moment that God shows up. Come on, how many believe God wants to show up in your life? I'm like, Pastor, I'm struggling still. Well, maybe you need to update your life with, with verse 19 of Philippians. He says, but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. God will do what? Supply all. Everyone say all. He didn't say some. He said all. He said, my God, he's telling the church, my God is going to supply everything that you need according to his riches in Christ Jesus. And you've got to realize that he is the source. What you're walking through may not, may not look like the source, may not be the source, but what you're walking through is a great place for him to display his glory so that somebody around you can see what God's doing. So somebody around you can see that your faith is real. See, it comes to the point we realize that, you know, in this situation, yeah, they were in a situation that was desperate and it, was, it, was, it seemed like denial. And then it really goes south. It was that moment of death for their lives. Look in, look in verse 11. It said, Jesus said, our friend Lazarus is asleep, but I am going 
there to wake him up. The disciples are like, hey, he's asleep, he'll get up. Then Jesus looks at him and says, Lazarus is dead. Lazarus is dead, and what you've got to realize is this, is that, that some of us in this room, we look at that and go, okay, he's dead. But in that culture, if you're dead three days, they believe that your soul would hover around your body. But on the fourth day, it's over. On the fourth day, there's no hope. On the fourth day, nothing moves. On the fourth day, it's over. My question for you is this. What have you given the death sentence in your life over? What is not moving in your life that you think is dead? See, if Jesus can raise a guy from the dead that has been dead four days, sitting in a tomb, and and, and we'll learn Wednesday that, that Mary says, oh, he stinks. Don't open that thing up. You know what I'm saying? There's some things in your life that stink that need to be opened up. But like, we'll get into that Wednesday. But when it comes to this situation, Jesus is like, Hey, I am the resurrection and I am the life. This is what you need to know. It, death is not final. What have you declared death over? Your marriage? Your relationship? Your business? Your kids? Your grandkids? We look at them sometimes and we think, this could never change. This thing is dead. This thing is over. My encouragement for you is this. Death is not final. Death is not final. What we see as lifeless and not moving, guess what? When the creator of the universe steps over and says, live, it shall live. Hello? How many believe Jesus is who he says he is? So start looking at at what's dead and start saying, you shall live. Look at, listen to the frustration in, in, in Martha's voice. Now, when you text somebody something angry or someone angry or what appears to be angry, you can't hear the... You know, the emotion in words that are typed or written. In this situation, she says this. She said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not be dead. Some of us could read it like that. She's been weeping and mourning the death of her brother for four days. And Jesus shows up and she runs towards him. I think she looked at him and said, Lord, if you had been here, we wouldn't be in a funeral We'd be celebrating. We'd be sitting down at a meal. If you'd been here, he would not be dead today. Jesus looks at her and says, he'll rise again. He'll get up. And she's, in her own frame, she's like, wait a minute. I know he's going to rise. But that's in the resurrection. That's in the end. That leads us to this moment where Jesus says what what he says, and this shifts and changes everything. His moment of declaration changes your life and changes my life. Because when we apply this moment to everything that we live through, everything that we go through, we realize that nothing that's dead is dead until he says it's dead. And he can bring to life whatever he wants to life. Why? Because he said, I am. Everyone say, I am. He didn't say, I have the resurrection. He didn't say, I have the life. He didn't say it'll happen in the end. He looks at her and she says, wait a minute. I know he's going to rise. I know what the scriptures say. I know that this is going to happen. And Jesus says, wait a minute. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. And if you believe in me, then you will not die. The one who believes will not die, even though he dies. And whoever lives will do what? will believe. Why? Because he is who he says he is. Listen, if he said it. He didn't just say, hey, Mary, Martha, I'm the resurrection and life. You believe in me, everything changes. He looks at her and he says, do you believe this? This is the moment that everything changes for all of us. Because she said what all of us know. We know what this book says. We've heard what this book says. We quote what this book says. It's like like your, your, your elementary school or middle school or high school student that lives in your house and you're trying to teach them about something in life and what do they say? I know, I know, I know. They don't want to hear it. I know, I know. They get that attitude like, I know. Take out the trash, I know. 
take out your, oh, I know, I know. And we go through this whole thing of, I know, I know. And you know something, when it comes to our faith, sometimes we act the same way. I know what his word says. I know he has a plan. I know he'll go before me. I know I can be blessed. I know I can rejoice. I know he, if I, if I do this and this, I know these things. But Jesus looks at her and says, do you believe? The difference is, yeah, knowing is, yeah, I know what I need to do. But believing is walking out what I live out. Believing is, okay, I don't just know it, I'm gonna live it out. I don't just know, she looked at him and said, said, you know something, Jesus? I believe, I believe, not just I believe this, I believe that you are the son of God who's come into this world. I believe that you're the Messiah. She labels Kim as the one that can recreate and change and redo everything. When it comes to your situation, are you gonna look at it and go, I know God can. I know God can. I'm in the midst of it. I'm frustrated. I'm discouraged. I'm going to show out my frustration and discouragement because I know, or am I going to look in Scripture and say, even though I walk through the valley, I will fear no evil. Why? Because he's with me. Why? His rod comforts me. His staff is around me, and my cup is going to overflow. Why? Because he is who he says he is. How many believe Jesus is who he says he is? So my question for you is simple, and Pastor Steve, you can come. My question for you is real simple today. What do you do when God doesn't deliver when you want him to? We do what Jesus said. If he said it, we should live it. Do you believe? See, that's where everything hinges. That's where everything lands. It's not what we know. Yeah, I know it, but if I know it and I walk out and I don't live it, then do I really believe it? If I know that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven and I don't live it out, then guess what? Do I honestly believe it? If I don't believe it, then I won't live it. But the moment that I believe it, that's when my life starts lining up. That's when I start looking at things different. That's when you can look at your situation. It may be a situation of desperation. It may be a situation of frustration. But all those things shift when you realize what Jesus said. This will not end in death. It will be for the glory of God. Jesus came so that you could have what? Life and life more abundantly. If he said that I am the resurrection and the life, that word life is the same word. It's called Zoe, and it's fully alive, fully moving, fully functioning. God wants you to be fully alive in everything in your life. So that means this. Your life is the perfect place for his glory to be revealed. Some of us in this room are like, no, 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 pastor. You don't know what I did. No, pastor, you don't know who I am. You don't know what my struggle is. You don't know what my pain is. You don't know what I'm walking through. The cross changed everything. Because on the cross, Jesus provided everything that we need for life, for godliness, because he died so that we could live. So when he stands before Mar Martha and says, I am, I believe today, he stands before all of us. And he says, whatever you think is dead in your life, I'm the resurrection. Whatever you think can't live again, I am the resurrection. Whatever part of your life you think you can't be fully alive in, he says, I am the life. Whatever part of your life you feel defeated in, discouraged in, less valued in, because that's the enemy who wants to alienate you and separate you from him and from his love because of situations, because of choices that we make. But I'm here to remind you that grace is sufficient. His love is sufficient. He hung on the tree so I could be fully alive so that I don't have to just know what life is. I believe that I can walk it out. He wants you to keep walking. Who is standing in your way of walking? What's standing in the way? 
our mistakes, our choices. We say this because we believe this. There ain't absolutely nobody on this planet that is perfect. But every person on this planet is the perfect place for his glory to be revealed. Because Jesus didn't die to fill a building. He died to fill our lives. He died so that we could be alive. He died so that we could stand up a little bit taller and say, you know, I may be in the middle of delay, but my God is greater. He's got a greater plan. Do you believe he's got a greater plan? Close your eyes with me today. You may be sitting here going, Pastor, I used to believe, but today during this experience, I know that I need to believe. I know that this is the moment where I need to believe again. And if that's you, this is your moment to say, Jesus, I want you to be the Lord of my life. I need to believe. When I say three, I just want you to slip your hand, wave at me, get my attention, because I want to pray with you. Because I believe it's moments like this that everything shifts and that Jesus comes and he lives inside of you. And you don't just know it, you start believing it and you start living it. When I say three, wave at me. Ready? Look in your heart. Jesus, I love you. Thank you for being in this room. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. It's so real and tangible. If you don't know him, when I say three, wave at me. Ready? One, two, three, wave. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Jesus, you're so good. Come on, if you waved at me or didn't wave at me, and you're saying, Pastor, I want to believe or believe again, it's simple. Pray a prayer like this. Say it in your heart. It sounds like this. Say this in your heart. Jesus, today, I believe. Today, I choose you. Today, I choose to live. I choose you, Jesus, because I believe that you died for me, and I believe that you have a plan for me. So, Jesus, Make my life what you want it to be. It's in your name I pray. Amen. Come on, can we celebrate together? Come on, can you stand your feet all across the building? I want to encourage you. You may be in the middle of a desperate situation. You may be in the middle of a situation that's, that's, that's discouraging. You may be in the middle of a situation where it's frustrating. You can say, Pastor, I know what you said. I know what the book says, I know what you're saying, but at some point, you have to attach your belief to it. You have to attach some faith to it. At some point, you have to step towards him and say, I believe that you have more. I believe that you can do more. I believe that you have got so much more for my life. You may be in the middle of a desperate situation and not know what the answer is. I'm here to tell you. Today is a good day to step out and say, I believe. Today is a good day to say, Jesus, I believe like Mary did, that you are who you say you are, and not just who you say you are, you can do what you say you can do. That looks like two things. You waved at me earlier, I encourage you, come stand and we'll pray for you. Maybe you're that person who likes, I wanna attach some faith to it. I'm gonna step out and I'm gonna stand in the front and I'm gonna stand in his presence and this is gonna be my act of faith. Because faith is moving. Faith is something that you do to step towards him and say, okay, God, I'm going to step into you and I'm going to believe. I'm going to keep what? I'm going to keep moving. I may be in the midst of the valley, but I'm going to keep walking towards him. And I believe from the moment you step up from where you are to right here, somewhere in between, he's going to meet you. Somewhere in between, you're going to stop knowing and start believing and you'll have a smile on your face. You'll know that you know that you know that he is going to show up in a great way. So Pastor Steve's going to worship. This isn't our clothes, but I'd encourage you, slip up both hands just for a moment. Father, I thank you, Lord, that in this next moment, Jesus, the Lord, somebody's going to believe. They're walking through a tough time. They're walking through a desperate time. They're walking through a time where, Lord, they don't think this thing can live. Jesus, you are the resurrection, and you are the life, and we choose to believe. We choose to attach our faith to it and move towards you. As Pastor Steve sings, I'd encourage you to step out from where you are, stand across this front and slip your hands up and say, today, God, I believe. Today, God, I believe. Come on, step in.
Thanks for watching. If you'd like to support this ministry, you can check us out at OceanwayAG.com and click the gift tab.